All right, welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm Scott Shelley, otherwise known as the Cow Guy. Thank you very much for tuning us in here on this, what is it, Thursday morning? Boy, is it Thursday already? Boy, life uh, happens fast, right? Let's take a look and see what we've got going on in these markets. Let's start with corn. Uh, we were up about a nickel last time we met, and we are about right there as still right as we speak. July's up five and a quarter cents. 466 and a half is last three ticks off the high of the day. And we're working on about a nine cent range. All right, so that's going to give you an idea where we sit in that range. But July stands at 466 and three quarters. These 488 and a quarter. That's up four and a quarter. And again, that too has got an eight cent range. And we're three ticks off the top of that eight cent range. All right, so that's what we've got going on in corn. That'll give you an idea. Beans were a couple cents better bid. Nah, we're, we're slipping a little bit here. July's down a penny and a quarter. 1245 even is last there. Well off the highs of the day by about 13 and a quarter cents. And I guess we're about six cents from the lows. So that's going to give you an idea about what's been happening there. And going out to the Novi New Crop, that's still higher on the day. And that's up two and three quarter cents to 1221, seven cents off the high and about seven cents off the low. So right in the middle of that range here today. That's beans. We're up about two cents except for that front month. Moving over to the wheat in Chicago, Chicago wheat, that's tailing off a little bit too. We've got July sharply unchanged at 693. That's July wheat in Chicago, 693. Moving out to the D, that's down three quarters of a cent. Three ticks, 7.33 and a quarter, nine and a half cents off the low. We're calling that about eight cents off the high. All right, that's wheat in Chicago. From Chicago, we go to Kansas City. Take a look at the hard red, three and a quarter cents better bid there. That's July, 7.02 and three quarters is last. Uh, we've had a 20 cent range, and we're about mm, seven cents from the top. All right, so that'll give you an idea where we sit. Dece, that's up three cents to 7.36 and a quarter. Uh, and again, we've had a decent range there of 20 cents, and we are about, mm, I would say, about seven cents from the top of that, too. So that's what's happening in the Kansas City hard red. Moving along to the Minneapolis spring wheat, one and three quarter cents lower in that front month. 734 and three quarters is last there, and that's just four cents off the low of the day, of the day. nine cents off the high. Going to the D, that's two and a quarter cents lower to 759. That's a dime off the high. And three and a half cents off the low. All right. Finally, let's go to the cotton. And that was been that's been pretty quiet. Fifty four points better here. Uh, Seventy nine ninety two is last there. We're uh, and we've got a two cent or two point uh, gain in the Dece. The seventy seven twenty nine. All right. We've got through all that. Let's bring him in. That's Ted Seifert, Zaner Egg Hedge in Chicago. Ted, anything jump out of you there? Yeah, I don't know. Really. Uh, uh... I guess it's corn. You know, corn's the strength of the day. It wants to be the leader to the upside. And uh, I think that's that sloppy forecast that was just talked about. Um, you know, I, I, we're not tremendously behind on planting, but we have a challenging forecast uh, and we're getting kind of short on time. So that's going to keep corn, I think, supported uh, until we're finally in the ground there. Um, but the thing is, you know, we really sold off last week. So at this point, we've taken back just a little bit more than half of last week's losses. Now, where do we go from here? Do we resume the uptrend? Do we make new highs? Or has this just been a balance off some key technical support, the, uh, I'm going to say, shallow trend line higher that we've had uh, for the past month or so? Um, and so, I, I don't know. I think today is going to be very interesting to see where we close. I'm not sure we're going to have a whole lot of robust trade tomorrow due to the holiday weekend. Um, but today could, should, could kind of set the tone and then we go into the holiday. And as you know, Scott, a lot of times when we come back from three day holiday weekends, we have big movers and shakers. Uh, the question will be which way. What's your gut instinct? I mean, are you getting all bold up or are you just, are you cautiously optimistic? I mean, what do you think? Um, well, you know, I, I think we could see some corn acres switch to beans, but I also do think that there was more corn acres than what were reportedly intended. Right. Uh, so. I think corn acres end up around 90 million. If we can, if we can have some windows, if we keep getting these smaller windows of planting, yeah, it's not ideal. I know, and we're not going to be happy about it. Um, it. We might hurt yield a little bit by by mudding in, but I think the corn acres will get planted. I do think you can see a little bit of an increase in bean acres, uh, and I really do feel confident that the bean acres will get planted. And right now. Beans are more about what's happening in old crop. Uh, you know, talk of Chinese uh, purchases out of the Pacific Northwest, cheaper rail uh, up towards to the Pacific Northwest, and the possibility of planting delays is keeping the new crop fundamental situation, which is really rather bearish, from weighing on old crop. But as soon as we get 70, 75 percent planted in beans, I think that situation changes, and then we'll be looking at kind of a really bearish new crop situation. Yeah, I mean. I... <laughs> 
I don't want that to be the case. Right now, I just kind of feel like we're in purgatory. I mean, I don't feel, I mean, I, I, I want us to be higher, but I, I understand if we don't. And yes, we've got these planning things out there, but I, I think you make some good points. And I, and I hate saying it's a wait and see, but you know, this is a weather market and we're gonna have to wait and see. So, um, but I do know that this water ultimately at some point in time is, is pretty good. So um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll leave it right there. Don't move, we're gonna go away. We're gonna pay some bills. We're gonna come back and talk more. Ted Seifert, Xander Egg Hatch. We'll be right back after this. All right, welcome back to the livestock sector of the day. Let's take a look and see how we're trading. We can start with live cattle, and we pulled up that board, and, well, uh, I don't know. I would, let's, I would like to get more excited, but I can't. You can tell by the tone of my voice there's not a lot going on. June's up three ticks, seven cents. 184.25 is last, and we've had a 55-cent range, folks. Oof, well, that's June live cattle. Uh, let's go out to the D. That's up five cents a nickel, 188.30. And that's had uh, not even a 60 cent range there, 57. So not a lot going on. 188.30 is last there. All right, that's live cattle. Moving over to the feeders, see what's going on there. Be interesting to see what Ted says is going on here because to me, it doesn't look like there's anything going on. We got an August board down 42 cents to 262.47, and Nove's down uh, 35 cents to 263.32. And I guess we can say that uh, we've had just over a buck range there. I guess that's probably the highlight of the day, feeders. Uh, moving over to the lean hogs. They were lower the last time. Uh, we're kind of all over the place, I guess. June's uh, up two cents right now. 95.42 is last there, and that's 22 cents off the low of the day. And not too far from like 57 cents off the high. Uh, going out to the, let's go out to, well, October's down seven cents, three ticks to 84.42. Uh, and again, that's not too far from the lows either. That's about what? 30 cents off the lows, so there you go. That's Lean Hogs. Let's see what Ted's got to say. Let's bring him in. Ted Seifert, Zaner Egg Hedge. Not a lot going on, brother. I mean, uh, I'll let you have the floor, but um, you're probably going to struggle. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I don't usually. But, yeah, uh, you know, Scott, um, it does feel like the livestock have started their holiday weekend a little bit early. Sure does. Uh, we are very quiet. But I'm also going to say, you know, with cattle now trading at the highest level that we've been since the end of March, really since we found out about that uh, avian flu and dairy cows and everything like that, we've erased all of those losses. We're back. We're, we're back, Scott. And, and for the fact that we're not giving up the gains here today after a bigger day, uh, last, last two days, bigger last two days, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday, we're, we're, we're really good for, the, for, uh, uh, for live cattle. Uh, the fact that we're not giving back any of those gains here today, I think, is a really big win. And even though it doesn't look like there's much going on in cattle, I think that is a telling thing for the, the cattle complex here today, especially since you have the bird cows back in back in the uh, news here today with yeah. another uh, person in Michigan being affected. And we're not down sharply. We're not limit down. So, you know. Markets tend to get jaded by things like that. We did it with we we did it with mad cow, right? I mean, um, you know, how many times are you going to uh, fool a market into you know these big reactions? And the fact that we're not getting one today and we're holding on to the gains, I think, is really very positive for the cattle complex. And I think suggests that we are fairly value priced, like we should be here. Uh, this was a big level of consolidation that we had back in February and March, uh, which could serve as a major level of resistance. I don't know if we need to go much higher. But I think we should be trading where we're at. Uh, I think it's justified. And we might we might start to trade sideways a little bit for a little while. All right, I agree. You know, it's uh, what I'm hearing is there's no new bad news. So there we go. That's, uh, that's a good way to put it. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. Have a great uh, holiday weekend if we don't talk. That's uh, Ted Seifert, Zander and Kedge. He's in Thank Chicago you. and we're not. We are not. We are in Nashville, Tennessee, and trying to make something of nothing when it comes to these uh, these markets. It's, it's, it's a very just, quiet livestock trade. Yeah. So thank you, Scott.